Hello everyone and welcome to yet another video. This time we're talking about power auras or rather how to get power auras working and configured. This therefore it is a guide. This is a guide to power auras. So first up we're going to be typing slash PA to bring up the power auras window. Slash PA kapow. We have the power auras window up. So basically you've got page one, page two, page three. This is just all of the slots for the different things that you might be monitoring. So if you run out of stuff to monitor, just go to the next page. Easy peasy. And then you can rename things, you can lock things, you can test things, you can see what's going on, and um, yeah, let's just close that, I don't want it testing anymore, let's go back to here. Anyway, let's go back to page one, and we're going to be doing a new one, so we're going to click new, and go over here. So first, right at the top, you've got your different textures, what you want to be doing. Custom textures, by the way, if you are an artist, you can draw stuff. You can put um, custom textures in the custom folder of the thing, and then you can have them in WoW. So if you want to draw whatever, I, I was uh, I can't even think of what you might want to put in, because this has got so many different things. But if there's something custom-wise that you want in there, that only you, of all people, can see and have in this thing, then go for it. Why not? Import it. You've got the default thing, which has got a whole bunch of different textures, 254 of them. So yeah, that's a, that's a fair amount. You know, giant stop signs, thumbs up, people screaming. It's all good. Maybe a, bit, a big circle, big ring, a skull, an exclamation mark. You've got root silence, power. Ooh, I like that flame one. Let's go with the flame one. I like that one. Anyway, you're in the model section. You can choose which models you want. Maybe you want a rocket ship, or you want a giant horse thing or a lion or you know Alex Straza or whatever. You've got um, text orders. If there's text that you want, you can like, type in the text for it to display. And um, I've never actually got that to work though. I've never actually got that to work. So yeah, but I wouldn't really use the text one anyway because you can just know. For example, I tend to use this the default one because they tend to be at least obscuring, and they can tell you when something needs to be done, and you can just sort of associate it with something. And you can change the opacity, so how invisible you want it to be, how see-through, so you can have it super opaque or just not there at all. So let's set the opacity to about 82%. We're going to put it over there. That's our little thing that we're monitoring with power auras. And you can change the rotation. You can kind of spin it around. Maybe we can... Hang on. Just, just, there we go. Yeah. Let's have it at 313 degrees, so it's going at an angle like that, because it looks awesome. And you can increase the size, reduce the size with the size bar. Position X is if you want to move it horizontally. Position Y is to move it up and down. You can also just, you know, drag it around the screen if you want to. And then we're going to go over here, down to this section over here, which is the main thing that we're going to be looking at for these things. That stuff is all easy peasy. And now we want to look at these other things. So for buffs. Say you want to monitor a buff. Now, this thing where it says stacks, whoa, what did I just do? What did I just do? There we go, let's go back to that. Okay. And this thing where it... Why is it not letting me edit the stacks? There we go. Now it's editing the stacks. All right. The thing with the stacks is pretty simple. It's just greater than or equal to zero. So you can have something be like only telling you if it's less than three or if it's equal to 3, or if it's higher than 5, or, or however many stacks. If you're looking for stacks of things, the, the greater than or equal signs, it's not actually that confusing. You know, it's it's pretty simple, actually. It's just you want something to be greater than or equal to 0, or, um, you know, less than 0. I don't think you can ever have less than 0 of something in this game. I mean, negative stacks of something would be a bit strange. But basically, you'll just have it on greater than or equal to 0 for the most part, unless you're looking for a specific amount of stacks for things, but for most things, you'll just leave it at greater than or equal to zero for buffs. And then let's choose a buff. So what buff do we want? Let's go with, well, we've already got like well-fed and stuff. How about, hmm, how about, how about the buff that we get from Rejuvenation, which is called Rejuvenation. Just using this as an example, you can have this as being whatever you want. Rejuven... Let's get the spelling right. Reju... Whoa. Wrong spelling. Terrible spelling. Rejuve... And nation. Terrible typos. Wow. Rejuve... And nation. In second thought, maybe I should have picked something that wasn't quite so terrible spelled. And... 
Then these sections down here. First, let's make sure that it's working. I'm just going to hit enter. Close this down, close that down. And then when we hit rejuvenation, boom, it shows. Right. So then let's go back into that. And now we're going to edit it. And now for these little box things, they look extremely weird and strange. But I just want to... Just just calm down about them. They're really, really not that scary. They scared the crap out of me first time I saw them, though. But it's actually not that complicated. For example, you've got exact name. Check this to test the exact name of the buff debuff action. So if you are if you want it to be exactly that name, nothing else, you don't want it to try and find something else in case you maybe made a spelling mistake, then exactly that name. Um, I don't ever tend to take that, like, ever. Um, but maybe if it's picking up the wrong thing, maybe you want to go with um, exact name. Like maybe it's maybe there's a spell called Rejuvenation Sun Tower. You know, so if you choose exact name, it'll stop showing you the thing every time Rejuvenation Sun Tower is on you. Only when Rejuvenation is on you. So that's when you might use it. And then you've got Invert. Invert changes the way it'll show, just completely around. So. It currently shows when rejuvenation, is on, when rejuvenation is on me, pow, we have a power order saying, Rejuvenation is on you, look at me, I'm sparkly and beautiful. Um, if you invert that, it will show when rejuvenation is not on you. So, that's kind of, it's just a different way of doing it, it's just the opposite way, that's all invert does. In combat, only show when in combat, and that's the way a lot of these things work. If you have it not ticked, it will show in both the cases. So for example, let's have a look at scenario. If you tick this, it will only show this debuff. It will only do any of this if you are in a scenario. So if you tick that, it will only show if you're in a scenario. right? If you cross that, it will only show you when you're not in a scenario. So if you go into a scenario, this won't work. Mm -mm. Nope, won't do it. But if you don't tick it at all, it will show in both scenario and not in scenario. Same thing goes for being alive, having a PvP flag, being a tank, being a healer, being a melee DPS, being ranged, being in a battleground, being in an arena, being in a flexible raid, 25-man heroic, 25-40 man, friendly target, self, party, raid, raid member, focus, party member, any member, unit name. Um, now, with the unit name, you can tick that, and then you type in the thing that you want to monitor. So, for example, let's say you want to make sure that... Um, your friend that you're with constantly has whatever buff you give them. Maybe you're leveling together and you want something to check to make sure that they've always got the buff. You can have that in the unit name thing. You just type in their name and then it will monitor them for you when they're in range. Um, and you've got self, party, or raid. Check this to test a party or raid member or self. And you've got friendly targets, enemy targets, you know... Um, cast by me. This is something, so just in case maybe you got rejuvenation on you, but you didn't cast rejuvenation. That's someone else's rejuvenation on you. So you can tick cast by me to make sure that it's, you know, only your rejuvenations that are shown. And that's basically the way this works. You can set it up the way you want, just with the boxes. I don't have to go through all of them, because they all work in the same kind of way. And that's one of the nice things about this. So now you should be able to use all of those boxes with no problems whatsoever. And that's, we've covered buffs quite nicely and easily now, but I want to talk about some of the other things. You've got AoE debuffs, action usable, aggro buff type, combo points debuff. You've got a lot of stuff you can monitor. You've even got like equipment slots where you can choose something to monitor what items you need to be checking and like what might be in the tooltip even. You can, for example, let's say you're in an arena and you're a warrior. You might have to, I've, I've heard that you kind of have to swap between sword and shield and like a two-handed weapon, for example, like sometimes you need a shield. Um, and this will help you kind of know, without having to stare at your character and be like, well, what weapons am I using? It will pop up saying, you, with a little aura basically telling you, you've got sword and shield, or another aura maybe, or you've got this kind of weapon equipped, or, or whatever it is that you need, it will tell you with the equipment slots, which is kind of nice. Also trinkets, you can monitor trinkets, or belts, or whatever it is that you monitor, it will monitor. Maybe you're like me and sometimes you'll change specs and then you'll be like, yeah, guys, let's go tank this. And then like five minutes into the fight, you'll figure out actually you're wearing Boomkin gear. Or you'll be like DPSing and be like, why is my Boomkin DPS so terrible? Because you're in all agility gear. This will kind of maybe help not do that. So you've got the equipment slots to check. You've got combo points, debuffs. Um, 
Now, what I want to do now, because I talked about this kind of thing in one of my videos earlier about the mana management with, with the healer guide. So I want to look at the mana, how to get something like an aura to show when you hit like 80% mana. So you go 80% mana, it goes BOOM! You need to be using your mana cooldowns now, man! Use those mana cooldowns. You can have like a pretty little thing reminding you. So let's have this be... Um, there we go, let's go with this and let's set the rotation to that way because I think that looks nice. And we're going to have this pop up whenever we hit below 80% mana. So we're going to move this to 80% mana. Now, if you click the invert button, it will show you when you're it'll show when you're above 80% mana. And if you don't have invert checked, it will show you when you're below 80% mana. And you can have whatever it is that you want checked here. But for this, I don't really need anything ticked. It's just mana, monitoring my mana, I think. Um, sometimes what will happen is you might like select someone who has less mana or something so like that's when you fiddle around with the boxes if you're having troubles with that you go with self party or raid you know, for example maybe the boss has mana or something it keeps showing because of that or something weird anyway so now we're going to close that and I've actually got another one of those symbols which this is the inverted symbol and this shows when I'm above 80% mana so if I heal and get rid of some mana, that disappears and the other one appears. So I saw the other one when I was above 80% mana, and this one's an example of, boom, you're below 80% mana, kapoom, you need to be using those mana cooldowns. And this is a lot of the way to use power orders. I just want to do a little bit more. We can go into the edit section, you just select the thing that you want to edit, and then you edit it. And I want to go into animation. Let's go with begin animation. Bounce. For example, maybe it'll bounce or something. The animation section, this is when it becomes active, when it shows, it'll do something to grab your attention a bit more. Like you can make it um, spin, or you know, you can make it flash, you can make it pulse, you can make it do whatever. Orbit, let's go with maybe orbit. There we go, it's now orbiting um, us. I guess the gravitational field of being a druid is just kind of intense. Uh, I don't really like Orbit. I think it looks kind of weird. It would definitely let you know what it's going at. It feels like it might bug out though, but let's just let's try it. So let's, let's close it and then let's go below 80% mana. What's going to happen? We've got an animation there. It's a little bit buggy though. It keeps flashing over there. But that'll definitely let you know that you're below 80% mana, but I would not want that all the time. It's slightly buggy. I imagine they'll fix that at some stage. Um, that's what patches are for. So I wouldn't really use the orbit one because I think it's a bit that would get a little bit distracting. But you can have it spin clockwise or, or spin counterclockwise, you know, whatever it is to just try and help make sure that it gets your attention. Because you know, if it's there and you've configured it all beautifully, but it isn't grabbing your attention and saying and grabbing you and shaking you like crazy, saying you are below 80% mana, use your cooldowns, you fool, before we all die. You know, unless it's grabbing your attention and screaming at you and slapping you in the face, then it's kind of a waste. And you can increase the animation speed down here, or the animation duration, or whatever. You can sort of slow it down, though I keep getting error messages. I don't think it's working properly. And you can, uh, the secondary animation goes kind of invisible, which is when we aren't using it, it'll go invisible. So there we go. It's spinning around. It's doing 360, 360, 360. And we should hit above 80% mana and then it'll go invisible to sort of fade out. Nearly there. Come on. Won't be long now. Just a few percent and boom, gone. It's cool. So that's, that's pretty much a lot of power auras. Feel free to go and download it. There should be links in the description. Then you can go and experiment with it. You can also do um, sounds, for example. Maybe you want it to scream at you. you know, or, or rather not scream at you, but you know, it'll play the sound or something when it activates, though it didn't that time, which was a bit strange. Um, it is a little bit buggy at the moment. I think that they've just kind of started taking over the project, so it's got a few bugs in it. But for the most part, a lot of the less advanced options work properly. So if you try and get it to orbit, it's going to bug out a bit. The sounds aren't perfectly done yet, but, you know, the, the, the general things are, are pretty well done, which is, which is pretty good. You can show stacks, show timer positioning. 
it's all good. So thank you for watching. I hope that this was enlightening for you. Links, as I said a little bit earlier in the description, to the add-on page. So you can go and download that add-on and show your supports. Because, of course, the more people show their supports, the more likely the person is to continue updating this add-on and keep it all good and running. So if you like Power Auras, go get Power Auras and enjoy it. Because why not? Thank you for watching and cheerio.